just give the Lord a hand of praise one more time, amen. Yes, he's a good God, he's a good God, amen. Let's not lose the atmosphere, just in the same atmosphere, without wasting much of our time. Allow me to welcome our pastor, even as he comes to take us on, amen. Let's just give hands for the Lord, let's welcome Pastor K, amen, 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 amen. amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Take some time just to greet your neighbor. Ask them, why do you come late to church? Why are you late? Greet your neighbor. Left and right. Talk to someone. Why are you late to church? Welcome to church. Amen. Tell them, come early. We started half past eight. Amen. John 16. 33 John 16 33 John chapter 16 verse 33 it says these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace these are the words of Jesus in the world you will have what tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world amen so as we take time now to worship Jesus, to lift up the name of Jesus, the world is full of trials, tribulations, we all have them. But leave your trials, your tribulations at the door, come in and lay down everything at the foot of the cross and worship Jesus. Amen. So let's take time now to switch over as we worship, focus on the King of Kings. We love this declaration we are going back to the foundations of our faith everything else these are the fringe benefits of our faith but the core foundation of our faith is Jesus Christ amen take time to worship your Creator and you'll find that as you lay down everything at the altar and before the foot of the cross he will begin to meet you at the point of your need amen amen we'll hand over to the choir to take us through worship lift up your hands close your eyes forget about everything forget about your neighbor and let's connect let's worship with god amen
You are 
begin to raise up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice. Welcome the Spirit of God in this place. Lift up your voice and welcome the Spirit of God. It's all about you. We thank you, mighty God. It's all about you. That you are here. Your presence is here. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. We bless you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Oh, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all. About you, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, it's all about you. Oh, it's all about you. Somebody lift up your voice and tell him it's all about him and all. Oh God. 
Lord, and you will oh, Jesus, Jesus we mighty. come Thank before you, Lord, you. That you have met her at the oh, point of need. From the time and the moments, oh God, she walks from this altar. You have done it for her. In Jesus' you. mighty name. Thank you, Father, oh God. Nothing is too difficult for you. You, oh God, can move Father, oh God, you can shift every situation. Oh God, and turn things around for her.
hope I just want to pray for just lift up your hands where you are you don't need to come up front if you're not feeling well in body just raise your hand where you are we are praying that the power of God heals you right there where you are raise your hand up high where you are let's pray for you father we are thanking you for your children thank you mighty God that your blood is here to heal in the mighty name of Jesus thank you for every lash that you took before the cross for our sickness for infirmity we command the healing power of Jesus Christ upon each and every body and command sickness to go back to the pits of hell to where it belongs in Jesus mighty name thank you Lord for complete restoration thank you father oh God for complete healing in Jesus mighty name we pray we thank you and we bless you in Jesus name we pray amen and amen Amen. Well, thank you, choir, for beautiful time of worship. I will hand over to Senior Pastor Mtha, who will take us for announcements and take our offering before we get into the Word. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for powerful music. Well, we greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. You can take your seats. We just want to go over the announcements today and then collect the offering. Amen. Please turn to your neighbor and say, you did well by coming today. Well, our bishop is not uh, in today. Uh, he's ministering at SOM Hub, School of Ministry Hub. They are having a conference. Our up by five street and uh, sixth avenue what a powerful time some of us we managed to attend a few sessions there what a beautiful time that they are having so our bishop is around uh they were ministering together with mom senior rev SNRT, even down there so they are still ministering even as we speak right now let's put our hands together for our father our bishop <laughs> hallelujah can I just uh, go through the announcements? We would like to welcome all visitors. If you are a visitor, please show us by raising up your hands today. We don't want to embarrass you, but just to acknowledge that you came. If you are here, this is your first time to be in this place. Please raise up your hand. Thank you so much for that hand. Please stand. If you don't mind, stand on your feet. Just stand. Who else is here for the very first time? I see. Please stand. Please stand there at the back. Stand. Who else? Thank you so much for coming. Who else is new in this place? While church, I want us to give them a warm harvest house welcome even this morning. Let's put our hands together for this. Thank you so much for coming. This is a good church. If you don't have any church, please feel free to come to this church. This is a good church. This is where the bishop, the founder member of Harvest House International of Churches uh, resides. So please make a date every sunday we are here 8 30 come through you'll be taught the word uh it's a very beautiful peop, uh, church with loving people amen please if you are seated next to a visitor please give them a hug this is a hug from me amen hallelujah i don't see you doing that thank you so much so all visitors you need after the service there is a visitors lounge you go through this way uh down down this corridor if you go through there there will be people that will welcome you and they've got something even to share with you tuesday prayer the church is encouraged to attend tuesday prayer from 5 30 p.m to 7 30. so make sure you do not miss prayer with the rest of the saints hello Will I want to disappear on Sunday Sunday after church and reappear on Sunday morning? But on Tuesday, you don't see them. Please turn to the other one and say, Are you a James Bond Christian? Are you an O7 Christian? Please, you need to come for prayer every Tuesday. Amen. You know, it's amazing that the things of God, there is not much that you can do. If you, do, if you don't pray. Hallelujah. If you are not somebody who can pray, 
I can tell you there are many things uh, that you, you cannot do. You are limited as a Christian if you can't pray. Hallelujah. Hey, are you here or you have gone home? Yeah. Please, can we see you on prayer? Turn to your neighbor and say, especially you want to see you on prayer on Tuesday. Well, there is a special service for the young people. If you are 13 years up to 21, please make a date this afternoon, half past two. Uh, they will be having a young people's service. So all young people, please do attend. Then AIM. AIM is a young adult ministry here at HHI. It will be having a prayer prayer Sunday next week. Is there anything that you want to say? Where is, uh, where is Pastor Sasha? Or is on the other side? Anything that you want to say? All right, there is prayer, prayer Sunday. Wow. Please, let's attend. Then the choir, choir, the award-winning SQ choir is inviting those interested in joining the choir for vocalists and those who can play, play instruments. You are to kindly see Pastor G U G U that other side. So if you are interested in joining the beautiful choir, powerful choir, amen. You can you can sing like Brian. Hey, I, Pastor Brian can sing. <laughs> All right, MLI Thursday prayers. Every Thursday there is there are prayers at church 5:30 to 6:30 p.m. K Network leaders come with your members. Never miss an opportunity to pr to pray. You see, you can see it's all about prayer, really. Prayer, prayer, prayer. You need to come and pray. So if you can't join on Tuesday, come for ladies' prayer on Thursday. Hallelujah. You will see what God will do with your life. Everyone is encouraged to belong to a home group in your area. There is a list there when you come through. Even when you are going out, there is on the notice board. Please look for an address near your place and attend that home group. What else? All right, tithes and offerings now. Please find an envelope to give. You need to have three envelopes here at HQ. Three envelopes. What for? The first one will be maybe for your tithes and your offerings. Your tithes and your offerings. I, I, th I think we all know what an offering is. Hello, HQ. We know what an offering is. I, I believe I'm talking to people who know what an offering is. You know, it's an amazing thing. An offer is something that you can offer. It can either be accepted or be rejected. Do you know that? Hello? It is an offer. The word offering comes from the word offer. So it means you can either offer something. It can either be accepted or be rejected. So right now, this morning, as you are about to give, I want you to look at your offering. And, 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 and try to imagine, to think, will it be acceptable before God? If you talk about money, people keep quiet. Amen. What is a tithe? A tithe is 10% of whatever you get. Whatever income that you get is a tithe. Hallelujah. So whatever you get, if you get a dollar, you can calculate, do the math. What it means is that the portion there that belongs to God. Hallelujah. I believe that we want a hundred percent tithing church. Me, I've got a privilege of counting offerings here at church. I've discovered several things. There are those people, whenever they are putting something, you see, I'm a receipt, I go, okay, I was spa, a palate could have You can just tell good this person, it was just an afterthought. They were just saying, ah, it's time to give, and they just went into the pocket and they put into the offering basket. And you think that your offering is going to be accepted before God. And then there are those people who you can see, who they are just tipping God. You know your tithe, but you don't want to take out that money. You would rather go to Nando's. Bishop says Nando's is open now. You would rather go and spend $100 on, in Nando's. But that church wanting any $100 in Malenku. Your God, who caused you to wake up this morning? Can I tell you something? 
Do you think that the alarm is the one that woke you up this morning? Now, for no one, the alarm I see of Usumuntu. We chat the alarm Ungenela doves. A more shall we say, one of these two buses are poor. This is a Hey, I'm preaching. I feel like giving myself an offering. Hallelujah. Then we want to give to us the album. We know our, we are recording. We are recording our beautiful album. I can see, I can tell you, this album, the world is not ready for it. I can tell you. It is going to shock the world. I've just watched some snippets of it. There is something that is cooking. Hey, we are cooking something as Harvest House. Wall. What, an, what a beautiful auditorium is going to be. So what we are doing right now, we are putting glazing right round. We are just doing glazing right now and then we are doing the toilets as well. We are doing the plumbing and all that. I think it's going to be usable by the end of August, I believe so. When we put our doors and everything, it can just be a shell just like we used to hire ZITF hole number four. It will be just like that. But ours is beautiful. Please take some time to go and visit the site. Go and visit the building project and see what God can do. It's an amazing building. Hallelujah. So we are privileged, you know, to be part of this building project. There will come a time where your money will not be needed. So utilize this opportunity now while we still need. I was well by Pilu to Moses. I want to have Niga was like Tunis City. Oh, oh, it's enough. Can you imagine when I now all look who says Savo with Niela and now it's the door is closed? What's going to happen? Octilevan Jane. Hallelujah. Please lift up your seat, write something uh, there. Please write like I have tried to explain and, and, and write what is it that you want uh, your offering maybe to go to us. Like I said, three, three categories, three, one, two, three. It's either your tithes or your offerings or your, your seat towards the, the album or your seat towards the building we need there is an there is an interesting aspect that is coming through i believe if not today tomorrow do you know our building has got a nice glass dome at the front how many how many know about that so this dome is coming either today if it doesn't land in Pulawayo today it's coming tomorrow bring the dome back Hallelujah. To bring the dome home. <laughs> the dome has finally come home. And we believe that this week they will try to put it up. It's going to be amazing. Uzana Tamans, one of these days, we have a queen of Sheba. And no spirit will be left in you when you visit the site. Hallelujah. But you want to finish ching ching or winter one. Ask Kuluma so, Kulumi faith, Rupe. Ugutiguza and Sakuza. But if faith, but you funny ching ching, and please turn to your neighbor and say ching ching. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
So put up, take off your envelope, lift up your hands. There are ushers here. They are going to give you the envelopes so that you give. Lift up your hand if you want something, if you want to give. Uh, why? Maybe the kids have got some money. <laughs> or oh, they've got your red. All right. If you want an envelope, please raise your hand. Write your name. Write where the offering is going to. Hallelujah. And then the choir is going to give us a powerful peace, even as we come to the front, even to give. Bishop, Bishop was telling uh, SOM Hub yesterday that in his church he has banned bonds. He says, no bonds in my church. So please, I offer no bonds there. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. And you hand over to the choir even as we come to give. Maybe let, let me just pray. Hold your seat. Hold your envelope so that I can pray. Then we hear the peace. Lift up your seat. Let me just pray. Father, we want to thank you for the privilege of giving in your house. We know that this place is fertile ground. Even as we are giving, Lord, we know there is going to be a return. A hundredfold, a thousandfold in Jesus' mighty name. Father, for those that are tithing, may you open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that they will have no room enough to contain in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you that the blessing of the Lord will rest upon your people. The blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and add no sorrow to be their portion. Whatever Lord, that they touch with their hands, Father, it will succeed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Let's put our hands together and come through and give. Kuti urarame makore akawanta hakuzi kudakwako inyasha zamwari kuti urarame upenyu akana hakuzi kudakwako inyasha zamwari ho inyasha ho inyasha zamwari inyasha Just one more time, powerful man of God today, an eloquent teacher of the word of God, who is going to take us on. What a man, powerful man, genuine man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Me, I've had the privilege of interacting with Pastor Carl from, for a very long time. Amen. You know, there are some people who are genuine. Genuine. Pastor Carl is one of them. Amen. He's not a fake pastor some way. He's not a pretender some way. Hallelujah. But he's a genuine, genuine man of God. Why don't you put your hands together? Pastor Carl. Thank you. You may take your seats. One, two, volume on this mic is a bit low. One, two, one, two. Well, we'd like to welcome you to church today. This is Harvest House International Church HQ. For those of you who are here for the very first time, uh, my name is Pastor Karl Nyati. I am just one of the many pastors here uh, assisting the bishop. Our bishop is Bishop Dr. C. Nyati, who, as we explained earlier, is preaching at the SOM conference this weekend, or has been preaching there together with mom. So we've been asked to preach today and I just want to take this opportunity to honor them in absentia for giving us the opportunity to minister the word of God we don't take it for granted amen amen, amen. so let's just pray quickly before we get into uh, the word of God father we thank you Lord for your word I pray Lord that as we speak it as we utter it father I pray that your word becomes a seed germinating in the lives and the hearts of your people thank you father oh god that your word will bring an effect and cause a change in our lives and in the house of god in jesus name we pray amen and amen amen, amen. right we are on the declaration jesus christ that is what we are teaching on now for the next two months you'll be hearing messages on jesus christ very important that we get back to the foundation of our faith anything that is built uh, on a shaky foundation will crash it will fall at the end of the day amen so the church the foundation of the church as we all know is Christ Jesus if we teach otherwise if we prioritize anything else the foundation is shaky and the church will end up falling amen so we're getting back to the solid foundation who is Jesus Christ and we'll be teaching on these i trust and i hope that everyone has a notebook or a pen check your neighbor check your neighbor see what are you writing on ask them do you have something to jot on an ipad your the notes in your phone or a notebook check your neighbor left and right let's all make sure that we are writing somewhere amen check your neighbor check your neighbor and see if they're writing somewhere we're teaching church we go through these messages so that we are all able to glean something and become solid Christians. Amen. Right, let's get into our key scriptures. Matthew chapter 2, verse 6. Matthew chapter 2, verse 6. It says, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not in the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel amen and that ruler is Jesus Christ it says who will shepherd my people Israel amen amen so our Lord and Savior is a shepherd we are doing well to emulate the greatest shepherd of all who is Jesus Christ amen next verse Matthew 4 chapter 4 verse 19 he says he said to them follow me and I'll make you fishers of men that's Jesus follow me and I'll make you fishers of men not fishers of money not fishers of anything else but fishers of men that is the main core business of the church amen Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20 and Jesus came and spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them 
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. So Jesus says these words in Matthew chapter, chapter 28, after he is re resurrected and he is about to ascend to heaven, he leaves this command, go ye therefore and make disciples of all men. Amen. 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 So the words, the, the departing words of a person before they leave or they leave you, you are the most important words. And Jesus says to us, go ye and make disciples. That is our mission. Amen. Last verse there, Matthew chapter 3 verse 10, it says, And even now as the axe is laid to the root of the trees, therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Amen. So a church that is not bearing fruit is a barren church, is a church that is not discipling, is a church that is not shepherding. Are we together? A church that is not shepherding, a, sh a church that is not discipling is a barren church. And it says, if it does not bear fruit, it will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Amen. Let's get into our message. So as we said before, Jesus Christ is the focus of our message in these two months and rightly so because most churches now have deviated from the truth. We are not teaching about Christ. We're teaching about the fringe benefits, everything else that is around, what you can gain, what you can benefit, what you can get from the church. But are you giving yourself? What do you have to give to the master? Amen. Amen. So we are like ATM Christians. We want to come in. Today I have a problem. I'm going to wake up and go to church and see how I can get a solution for my problem. But what are you giving? Have you laid down your life before God? Amen. Amen. So we all know the benefits of serving God, but do we really know him? How many of us can say we really know him? This is a question that ever since I think we started this declaration or being ordained as a pastor, you start to ask yourself, okay, we are saying that we serve Christ Jesus. He is our God, but do we really know him? If I was to die today and stand in heaven before God and be judged, would I say I really know him? Do you know him? as you are seated there or are you carrying out the motions just walking into church come in sing some nice songs hear a message go back out but there's no relationship do you know him who is christ to you who is christ to you every person i believe must have a personal revelation of who christ is amen if you can ask me I'll tell you something different. If you can ask Pastor Brian, he'll tell you a different story. Ask the next person, who is Christ to you? I believe that you must have a personal testimony to be able to tell who is Christ to you. Amen. Amen. Another question, do you serve him? Do you serve him? Are you serving God? I think this is where the church of the 21st century really falls short. A lot of us come here and we are just on the bandwagon, but very few of us are serving God. Amen? Amen? You see that on a Saturday, for example, we are going out, we do evangelism. That is part of our service to God. It doesn't, you don't gain anything by doing that. Actually, you have to pump out more of your resources to come here. We burn fuel coming here every Saturday. We sacrifice our time. We could be doing other things. We go out and we talk to people that don't even know that we are coming. We knock on doors. Sometimes we get rejected. Sundays, we wake up in the morning, we go back and we search for those same people, burning our fuel. Sometimes you drive all the way to wherever you're going to and you come back empty-handed. There's not even one person that has told you they are coming. Service to God. You don't gain anything you actually lose it's your sacrifice amen so how many of us can answer that question and say i am serving god are you serving god or are you just 
a bystander? Are you just a passenger? I'm here to challenge you. Let's serve God. Amen. Do you seek to please him? Or is God a panic button that you press when life goes wrong and you have needs? Amen. Many people you find hop from church to church. You ask them, if we're to do a survey here, why are you in church today? Ah, things were pressing. I thought, let me just find the closest church and step into there. Amen. ATM transactional type of Christianity. Weak Christianity. No relationship. Amen. Amen. So I want to challenge us. Let's place value on our relationship with Christ. Where do you really place value? Where do you really place value? Amen. Matthew 6 verse 19 to 21. It says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Amen. Matthew 6 24, it says, no one can serve two masters for either you hate one and love the other or else you will be loyal to one and despise the other. This last statement says, you cannot serve God and mammon. Man, it's funny that you find some people come to church, claim to be children of God, but if you were to get a business call right now, you would walk out of the service. So who is your real God? Is it God or is it mammon? Mammon is money. Amen. Where do you place your value? Where do you place your value? The other day, I was just sharing with a friend of mine. I was saying, you know, there are certain times that you have to put aside to show that I've put this time aside and nothing else is going to come in my way. If I absolutely have to, then maybe I'll skip. But Sundays, Tuesdays, I'll be there. Saturdays, I'll be there because I've chosen that I've, I'm going to serve God. Amen. But for some of us, if there's a quick deal on a Sunday, there's something to do on a Tuesday evening, you're gone. So your God and the thing that you place value on is really mammon. Amen. Are we together? So who do you serve? Who do you serve? This one is to my fellow pastors, just like me. This thing really hit me hard. As I was reading John chapter 15, John, if it's not there in the notes, can you just go to John chapter 15? I was reading this. A lot of us as pastors, we are Levites, modern day Levites, meaning that we have dedicated our lives to serving God. Amen? Right. So when you are ordained, hands are laid on you, you are consecrating yourself to the service of God. Amen? But you'll find that during the week, because of life's pressures, we chase hard after survival, isn't it? Money, we all need to survive. There are pressures of life. And you find that you, get, you begin to neglect the things that God has called you for. Let's look at this scripture. John 15 verse 1, it says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. This is Jesus speaking. Verse 2, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit... He prunes that it may what? It may bear more fruit. Right. So this is my challenge to us as pastors. Right. We are connected to the vine. When you step into the place of prayer, I believe that God looks at you and he sees a branch that is either fruitful or fruitless. Amen. Amen. So when you come in with your shopping list to God, God, I need this, I need a house, I need a car, I need this, I need that, I need a breakthrough. God looks and he says, but the thing that I've given you to do first, you are barren. You are fruitless. So at what point do you have, how are you able to, to bring forward a bargaining chip before God when you are fruitless with the first thing that he has given you? Amen. Amen fruitless branches that's what most pastors are we are just written pastor here but there are actually some sheep who are more fruitful than we are it's embarrassing it's embarrassing 
There are actually some sheep who win more souls during the week, more than us pastors do. They are there on a Saturday. If you ask them, you will check. They have disciples. They have people. A sheep that can point to you and say, one, two, three, four. These people, I brought them to church. These people, I led to Christ. These people, I check on them every week. But you'll find a whole pastor barren. Nothing. No fruit. But you step in the place of prayer. And you are crying for your financial needs. And God says, but the first thing I gave you, you are barren. So you will exhibit barrenness in every part of your life. Amen. Verse 3. Verse 3. Verse 3. You are already clean. Verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Amen. So as we abide in Christ, we bear fruit. Verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me. And I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can, you can do nothing. Right? If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt. Next. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, here is the key. You will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. So check your area. Check the areas where you are barren. As a minister of God, as a pastor, as a shepherd, as a home group leader, we've been given certain tasks and assignments. But you find you don't pitch up on a Wednesday. You don't even bother to tell your people that you're not coming. Your home group has two people continuously from beginning of the year to the end of the year. But you are crying, Lord, answer my needs. Supply my needs. But what about the work of God? It's barren. Verse 8, but by this, verse 8, verse 8, verse 8, by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. So if you don't bear fruit, you are not a disciple of Christ. That's what it means. As the Father loved me, so I have also loved you. Abide in my love. We'll stop there. Amen. So many times you find that we have no point, we have no place to reason, to bargain, to exchange with God. We are fruitless, fruitless pastors. Amen. So sadly, many people are in darkness and the world and the cares of it have swallowed us up. We spend so much time worried about our short, finite lives here on earth that we forget to think about eternity. I saw this interesting video this past week. There was a guy holding a rope, long rope. The first part of that rope has a red sort of piece. Then that red piece from the, from the, from the front of the rope, maybe just about an inch in, it's red like this. The rest of it is white. So imagine... A long rope, maybe from where my sister is sitting there to that end. Just an inch of that rope is red, the first part of it. That first inch of the rope represents your life here on earth. Your life here on earth. I'm 37. That means I've reached, I've already passed the life expectancy in Zimbabwe. Most people are expected to live up to 35 years of age and then they die. Pressures, stress, whatever it is, people don't live long in Zimbabwe. So if you're already 35 years of age, you've passed already the life expectancy. Amen. Meaning that probably what's left of your life is less than 40%, depending on the grace of God that's there. Right? So now look at your life and evaluate and see. What is it that you've done for God? In the lifespan that you've been given. What is it that you've been, What can you show? What can you present before God? Amen. The rest of it, when you die, the rest of that rope is eternity. And you'll be judged for your works, for your fruitfulness, or the lack of it. Amen. 
So I just want us to look quickly at who is Jesus, who is Christ, who is Christ? We all have our own definitions, but what does the word of God say? Who does Christ say he is? Amen. Number one, Christ is the bread of life. He is the bread of life. John 6 verse 35, it says, and Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Amen. Amen. So bread there speaks of two things. Bread can be provision. Bread can also be the word of God or God himself. Amen. So in God, in Christ, we have our provision. Amen. So when we hide in Christ, everything that we are looking for is in him. He's the bread of life. It says, he who comes to me shall never hunger. He who comes to me shall never thirst. Those are two of the great uh, needs. If you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right at the bottom, you have the need for food, isn't it? So your basic, basic, basic needs, the needs that you have are all met in Christ. Number two, he is from heaven and a part of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Amen. We believe that God is three in one, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. That's what we mean by the Trinity. John 8 verse 23, it says, and he said to them, you are from beneath and I am from above. You are of this world and I am not of this world. Amen. But Christ came down, he became a man, given birth through the Virgin Mary, lived as a man for 33 years, gave his life and went back to heaven, completed his assignment and went back to heaven. So he's a part of the Holy Trinity, God the Father. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Number three, Christ is the light of the world. Christ is the light of the world. John 9 verse 5, it says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Amen. Amen. It's a scary thing, I think, to think of what life is without Christ and without light in it. Amen. Right now, we see the rise of evil. Kids are being taught in schools about lesbianism, gayism, how you can be non-binary or binary, whatever that means, transgender, transsexual, all these things are being taught now to our little children. And this is now the absence of light in the earth. We are still there, we are the light, the church here is the light, we are the salt of the earth. But there's coming a time where God will rapture, take away his church, and the grace that is there is no more there. Meaning that there's a time where evil will run rampant, and you and I don't want to be there at that time. Condition to be in heaven, live right. Are you a child of God? Are you fruitful? Does he know you? Do you know him? Questions to answer. Ask yourself. Number four. Christ is the door. John 10 verse 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And he will go in and out and find pasture. I like that verse. Christ is the door. Many times if you've been on evangelism, people will challenge you. Muslims in particular will challenge you and say, Allah God is the same person. We are serving the same God. But when you know the scriptures, you are able to look and challenge that and say, but Christ is the only door. There are not many doors. There are no many ways to Christ. There's only one way to Christ, to God. And that is through Christ Jesus. Amen. It says, if anyone enters by me, Christ only, not Muhammad, not Buddha. Amen. Anyone enters by me, he will be saved. He will go in and out and find pasture. Pasture being what? Provision. Amen. Amen. Number five. Christ is the good shepherd. The good shepherd. John 10 verse 11. He says, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Amen. And that is what we are 
emulating as the church Christ who is the good shepherd. Amen. I believe any pastor who is worth his salt is emulating the good shepherd, laying down his life for the sheep, for the church. Amen. 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 Number six. Christ is the son of God. Jesus Christ, he is the son of God. He says, do you say of him whom the father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the son of God. Christ was living and walking as a man in flesh and many, especially the Pharisees, Pharisees and the scribes of that day, could not accept that he was saying that he is the son of God. But Christ, Jesus Christ, is the son of God. Amen. Amen. Number seven. John 14, verse 6, Jesus says to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Further solidifying what we're talking about earlier. You cannot say that Allah and God are the same. They're two totally different entities. God is God. And you can only get to God through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Number eight. He is, Christ is the Alpha and the omega the beginning and the end revelations 1 verse 8 Christ, i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end says the lord who is and who was and who is to come the almighty amen so we've looked at who christ says he is amen we should not be confused if you know the word of god you should be confident of who christ is amen you should be confident of who Christ is to you. You should be confident of Christ's promises to you. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's look at the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Jesus spoke many times about the kingdom of God. And it was somewhat his message to spread the good news of the kingdom of God. But ask yourself, what is the kingdom of God? You begin to see a recurring threat or message that Christ taught. So many times Jesus taught and spoke of parables that illustrated the kingdom of God. And from my basic understanding, when I look at the scriptures, I see that the kingdom of God is basically God's love expressed towards mankind through the sacrifice of Christ to reconcile man back to himself. Amen. Amen. So therefore, the kingdom of God is about people. It's about you and I. It's about souls. Amen. Amen. Every single person sitting here is of top priority to God because your soul matters. Amen. 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 The kingdom of God is about lost souls. The kingdom of God is about winning people back to Christ. Amen. 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 Simply put, that's what it is. That's what it is. That's our mandate. That's our mission. Amen. So we see this in the three parables below. If we read uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30, it says, Another parable he put forth to, forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed a good seed in his field. But while the man slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tears? Then he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the wheat with them. Amen. Amen. Meaning that while we are on earth, the two types of people, it's either you're the wheat or the tears either you belong to God or you belong to the kingdom of darkness there's no in between right but we will coexist on the earth together for some time verse 30 says let both grow together until what the harvest and at the time of harvest I'll say to the reapers first gather together the tears bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat and put it in my barn amen you don't want to be a tear. 
you don't want to be those sent into the lake of eternal fire. Amen. Amen. Know that you are the wheat. Know that you belong to God. Know that when your life ends, you are going to heaven. Are we together? Amen. Next, Matthew chapter 13, verse 47 to 50. Another parable. Jesus says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew it to the shore and sat down and gathered the good vessels. But then what? They threw. Are we together? Can we read? They, they threw the bad away. Are you good or bad? So it will be at the end of age that the angels will come forth and separate the wicked from amongst the just. Amen. Where do you stand? It says verse 50, And cast them into the furnace of fire. There they will be wailing and gnashing of teeth forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. Amen. Eternity scares me because right now you can put a time on this service. You know that uh, Pastor Carl, this message is boring. I know 12 o'clock will be done. I'm out of here. In the afternoon, whatever activity you're doing, you know at this time, you finish at this time, you can go home and sleep. There's time set for everything. But with eternity, there's no time. <laughs> there's no time. So meaning if you die today outside of Christ, that's it forever if you read this book uh what's that book called by mary Kay baxter forgetting the title where she had visions of heaven and hell uh she speaks of hell as a place she had an experience of herself going into a pit god took her to heaven to see what heaven was like and then he took her now to hell to see so she describes it as like as she was going to hell it was like a, a tunnel a dark tunnel and a pit going down into deep darkness and as you are going down at fast speed high speed going down into the pits of hell you are feeling heat a heat that keeps intensifying but along with the heat you are smelling the smell of dead flesh rot and you are hearing the screams of billions of people as you are going down to the pits of hell. And she describes hell as like a body. The head of hell, the arms of hell, the torso of hell, the legs of hell. And depending on how you lived your life, you will be allocated a special place in hell. Amen. So when you arrive there, your flesh does not die. You are in a lake of fire. And it's as though your flesh falls off and it grows back again. And there are worms in hell that go through the flesh in and out of the skin. And people are screaming. And there's terror. And there's the stench of rot. And this thing never ends. It's not like it's for one hour. It's not like it's for two years. It's not like it's for ten years. It's forever. And because you chose in this short life to live your life the way that you wanted to live it. You heard messages like this and you just thought, ah, I'll fix my life. I'll go to Christ when I'm ready. You don't know when you're ready. You could step out of this Sunday, this service, and this be your last service. Be ready. Make sure that your life is ready. Don't live recklessly. There's no tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised. Amen. Are we together? Let's look at the last uh, parable there. Matthew 18. Verse 11 to 13. For the son of man has come to save which was lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the 99 and go to the mountains to seek the one that is straying? Amen. That shows the love of christ he can leave the 99 and come for you just you just you who is straight away and if you should find it assuredly i say to you he rejoices more over that sheep than over the 99 that did not go astray amen 
And so I believe this scripture here speaks about compassion. Let's have compassion to people that are lost. We live in a lost and a dying world, but we don't exhibit the same love that Christ had for the church, for that one person that goes astray. How many times do people within our midst here, something goes wrong, they disappear, and we never ask about them? There are people who serve with us, alongside us, people who sit next to us, Sunday in, Sunday out. The moment they disappear, no one bothers to call, no one bothers to find out where that person is. Where is the love that Christ had? Where is the compassion? People go astray, and they go into darkness, and we let them go that way. Where is the love that Christ had? As shepherds, as pastors, where is the love that Christ had for his church? Are we really following the great shepherd? Are we really emulating the great shepherd? Amen. Let's go forward. And so I think I'll just get into 12 ways to emulate the great shepherd. Maybe I'll just do six for today. Tuesday, I've been asked to preach again. I'll finish up the other six on Tuesday. Amen. Right, 12 ways to emulate the great shepherd. 12 ways to emulate the great shepherd. This belongs, this, these points are for you, for every person, for every lay person, pastor, whoever you are in the church. This is for you. No one is exempt. Number one, lead or shepherd people by example. Lead or shepherd people by example. John 10 verse 3, to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls the sheep his own out by name and what and what leads them out the great shepherd leads them out so every shepherd must be practically there for his sheep so that they can learn from him or her for sheep learn by what they see right for sheep to learn something they have to see you do something first I like the way that Bishop leads. A lot of pastors have developed a guru type of mentality. When they become promoted to have a large ministry, they don't really get involved in the, really the basics and the important things of the ministry. We go out, again, I'll use the example of evangelism, every Saturday. The bishop is there in the forefront, winning souls, leading by example. But you find that a lot of pastors these days, or even some of us pastors under the bishop, we want to act like executives. No, guys, go and do evangelism. Get the phone numbers, phone and everything. Bring the people back to me and show me who you've brought. Are you leading by example? Go out there into the fields yourself and lead by example. Amen. Just as Christ led his disciples. He was not an executive. He led by example. And they followed. Amen. Amen. Number two. A good shepherd is known by his sheep. A good shepherd is known by his sheep. John 10 verse 45. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him for they do not know the voice of of strangers amen all right how this applies to us so you bring people i and talk to the people that you talk to every side the new people standing alone how will they know you you are their point of reference to the church amen but we find ourselves hanging together around in cliques. These new people that have come to church are left alone. We just throw them transport money and then they go back. How will they know? How will they follow? Amen. It means that you become like a small pastor. The pastor that they know is you because you preach the gospel to them. And your life also is an example. Amen. Amen. So when they have questions to ask, they will not come to the bishop. They will not come to some pastor that they don't know. But they'll come to you because you are the point of reference. Amen. 
Amen. So sheep will not follow a stranger. They will follow you because you are the shepherd. You are the point of reference. You are the person that led them to Christ. So let's change that attitude. I'd like to encourage us. When we bring people into the house of the Lord, find time to speak to people and develop relationships with those people that you are leading. Amen. A lot of us have been given home groups. I'm sure most of the leaders here, they are about 33 to 35 home groups. I hardly see people standing outside and talking to their home group members. People just come into church, we hop straight into our cars, we disappear. And we expect those people to stay here. You will be accountable for those souls in heaven. Amen. Number three, a good shepherd knows his sheep by name. So if you are a shepherd, I believe this is a grace and a skill that God has to give over time. <laughs> I'm also praying that God gives me this grace. It's hard to learn people's names. It's hard to learn people's names. If I'm going to talk to a new person today, the chances that I'll remember your name next week are very slim. But that's what makes people feel loved and welcome. Amen. A church where there's no love, people don't want to come back there. It's very difficult. So, when you have a small group, a home group, a care network, whatever it is, a department, know people by name. Don't say, hey, you there. Or you over there. How is the person supposed to feel loved or welcome into that place? When you don't know them by name. Amen. I believe Christ had a sharp memory. You'd know, he knew his 12 disciples. But he'd also have the capacity to remember certain people that he crossed paths with. Amen. I've seen that with Bishop as well. You travel with Bishop to different hubs. There's so many churches. There's so many people. Some people you would have seen maybe three years ago. But he's able to recollect and remember this person. This is their name. This is the hub they belong to. And this was the last conversation that we had. <laughs> I said, you know, that's, that's the grace of God right there. That's the grace of God. Recently, I was also told about Baba Guti, great general in the, in, 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 in the church, in the country. I was told that when you would sit down with him, because you'd meet people from across the board, different people from different churches, you would sit down with him and you'd have that sharp memory, even in his old age. But remember, I last saw you at this time. You are from this church, and this was the conversation that we had. How did things progress from that time? Ah, that, to me, is the grace of God. Amen. So, let's remember. Let's know who people are. Amen. You can't be a pastor and you're forgetting people's names. The five people in your home group, you don't even know who they are. Five people that you are leading, you can't remember their names. It's poor. I'm sure they don't even feel loved or they, don't, they feel like you don't even want to be there. A good shepherd must remember people's names. Amen. Amen. Number four. A good shepherd must stay with his or her sheep. Amen. Stay with your sheep. Don't dump the souls. Don't be a compassionless person. Stay with your souls. Know your people. Keep touch. Keep base. Know what's happening. Amen. Amen. Stay with your sheep. I like the example that Bishop uses. He says a couple of pastors were advising him, Bishop, the church is large. Why don't you move the headquarters to Johannesburg in South Africa and we can set up. And he says, no, no, no. This is where God planted me. This is where I started. I'm staying with the people that I've been with right from the beginning. Amen. Amen. So there are people who've been here for years. Mam Chirabakua, Tendovus, and many others who've been here for over two and a half decades. Over 25 years coming here, week in, week out. And a shepherd says, I will not leave these people. I will stay. I will be committed to them. That is my job. That is what God has called me for. Amen. I pray for the same grace as well. 
that God gives us the grace to stay with people and be concerned when people don't come. Be concerned about people when they are not there. Where is your heart of compassion? Amen. Are we doing things out of the love and the fear of God or just because it's been assigned to you? That's the difference between a son and a hireling. Are you doing things out of duty? Or are you doing things and saying, Lord, this that I'm doing, I'm doing before you. I commit these people into your hands. The home group that I lead, the people that I lead, I pray for them. I am concerned about them. I am concerned about their growth. I know what's happening in their lives. Or it's just an assignment, a duty, right? I need to go and lead home group. Whoever is there, you do your thing, half baked message, and then you're out in 20 minutes. And that's it. It's my assignment. I did what needed to be done, and that's it. Stay with your people. Know your people. Amen. Number five. A good shepherd knows his sheep. John 10 verse 14. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I'm known by my own. Amen. Know where people live. Know what people do. What is it that you do for business? Where do you learn? Where do you study? What's happening? What is it that you aspire to do? How can I pray with you so that you can reach your goal? Amen. Amen. But you have pastors here that are clueless. All the people that surround them, they are clueless. They don't even know where they stay. don't even know what's happening. And people can feel that you are just doing this out of. Amen. Amen. So God, may God grant us the wisdom to help build his church. Amen. Amen. Christ, you'll find that he knew before G Judas was going to betray him that this guy is the rotten apple here and he'll betray me. That's how well a shepherd must know his people. So you'll find every Sunday when you see Bishop laughing here, saying, I know my people. I know my skakararas. I know my guys and my girls. He knows. Spending time here with your sheep and working with people over years, God begins to give you the grace to know your people. So you, at your smallest level, know your people also. Don't be confused. Don't be surprised. When someone stabs you in the back, you should know that this thing was coming. You should know that it's coming. Know your people. Amen. A good shepherd knows his sheep. Amen. So a lot of pastors, a lot of shepherds, they know before time that this person will be disloyal, this person will betray, but they often just watch with the heart of Christ and pray, help this person before this happens. When it does happen, it's not a surprise. And they've been left to their own fate. Amen. Don't be a pastor who's always surprised by different actions. Know your people. Know what's happening. Know what to expect. Amen. I'll end with this last one. Number six. And then there's something I just want us to do after this to make sure that we are practically practicing what we are teaching here. Number six, a good shepherd's life is known. A good shepherd's life is known. So your life as a shepherd must be an open book. I've never seen any good shepherd who has secrets or who is a mystery figure to his people. Like our modern day prophets, people are worshipping, then just before the message, just before it's time to preach, the prophet comes in with bodyguards, they are clearing the way, there's a red carpet road, quickly comes, preaches whatever he's preaching, does his prophecies, then next thing, pew, out the door, there's a limousine waiting outside and pew, they're taken away. What is all that mystery? Why are you a celebrity? What's so important about you that you should be guarded, bodyguards around you? People don't know who you are. They don't know where you stay. They don't even know who your wife is. You are just in and out like a ghost. What is that? People should know you. People should know you. Your life should be an open book. 
I know my pastor. I know him. I can see him at any given time. It shouldn't be something amazing to meet up with your pastor. Amen. So the sheep must be able to reach you and approach you at any time with their problems. Amen. Be approachable. Let's be approachable. We are not gurus. We are not celebrities. We are just people that God has called to shepherd his people. Amen. All right, let's stand up. We'll stop here for today. So, I want us to, to do a practical exercise. The first thing, there are two forms of shepherding that we've put in place in the church, and it's for your good. We are tired of people in the church who complain, the church, yeah, the church has no love, the church didn't pitch up when I had a funeral, but we don't know who you are. You don't come for home groups, you don't come for prayer, you don't come for, for the MLI meetups. How do we know who you are? When tragedy, tragedy hits you, you want people to attend to you, but you don't avail yourself. You don't belong to the smaller groups in the church where we can lead you and disciple you. Amen. First thing, can I ask all the MLI Care Network leaders, please come to the front. MLI Care Network, if you're a Care Network leader, please come to the front. A Care Network leader, please come to the front. All Care Network leaders, MLI Care Network leaders, please come to the front quickly. Please come to the front. MLI Care Network leaders, please come to the front. Right. Ladies, for as long as you are, is it 21? What's the age? 30. Anyone who's married from the age of 21 going upwards, you belong to MLI. Every lady, you belong to MLI. So now what I want you to do, every woman, please come up front. Come up front, we'll confirm whether you belong to a K network. If you do, you can go back. But every lady, 21 years and above, please come up front. Please come through. Let's do this quickly. Let's do this quickly. Every lady, 21 years and above, as long as you are a woman in the church, come to the front. Every lady, every lady, every woman, every woman, every woman, quickly, let's do this fast. Come to the front. Come to the front. I hope these ladies have something to write on because you will need to get their details. Care Network leaders, please get something to write on so that we capture every lady. Every lady, make your way to the front. If you know your Care Network leader, please go closer to your Care Network leader. Let them confirm that you are part of the group and then you can go back. Let's do this quickly. Every lady, every woman, come to the front. And make sure that you are a part of a care network. We are shepherding. We are being good shepherds. We want to know who you are. We want to make sure that you belong to a care network. Amen. Quickly, ladies, to the front. Let's do this quickly. Take down their details, care network leaders and add them to your, to your WhatsApp groups. Let's do this quickly. Take down their details. Take down their details. Once you're done, you can go back to your seat. If you've submitted your name, please go back to your seat. If you're in a care network already, that's fine. You can go back to your seat. We want all ladies that are not in care networks. Please don't leave. We want to do this quickly. There's something else that we need to do straight after this. All ladies must belong to a care network.
Do not leave, please do not leave. We just need to complete one other assignment before you leave. Amen. If you are done, if your name has been submitted, please go back to your seat. If your name has been submitted, please go back to your seat. Thank you. If you are done, you can go back to your seat. Thank you. If you are done, you may go back to your seat. <clears throat> Last one before we leave. Last one before we leave. Right, right. Last one. We are doing this to make sure that you are shepherded in the church. Amen. You cannot be late if you are not known. Right. Can I ask all the home group leaders, please come up front. Home group leaders, up front. Let's do this quickly. Let's move quickly. Home group leaders, up front, up front, up front. Every home group leader, up front. Thank you. Let's do it quickly. Let's do it quickly. Let's do it quickly. Right. Every person must belong to a home group. It's important. You need to be led. Coming to church on a Sunday is not enough. If you need prayer during the week, if you need to be taught the word, we meet in homes, different parts of the city, and these are home group leaders. So, I want to do this quickly so that we can wrap up i'll just go across right if you know you're not in a home group approach these people and attach yourself to a home group right what area what area is this Dobingula. and suburbs right if you stay in any of these two areas please raise your hand quickly Dobingula suburbs please raise your hand quickly quickly come to the front come this way let's make it quick come to the front are you in the home group right if you're in the home group that's fine anyone else that is not in a home group these two areas are we fine there are we clear right thanks much of an area anyone for this area that is not in a home group please show your hands quickly raise your hands raise your hands Machoban, raise your hands. Right. Next. Ngubeja Thorn Group. If you stay in these areas and you're not in a home group, please raise your hands. Let's do this quick. Please raise your hand. Thorn Group Ngubeja. Thank you. Gulumane 12. Gulumane 12. Anyone that stays in Kulumane 12, you don't belong to a home group. Is there anyone? There, there's one. Please. Kulumane 12, right. Next. Ziligaz. Anyone who stays in Ziligaz, you are not part of a cell group. Please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. Ziligaz. Is there anyone? Which part? B, B, close to the B area, B square. Anyone? Tozan. Anyone? Right, thank you. Next. 
hillside, morning side green hill, morning side green hill, morning side green hill area. There, there's one. You are together. Anyone in morning side green hill? Morning side green hill. If you're not in a home group, please show your hand. Please raise your hand. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Next, CBD one. That is from Sixth Avenue going downwards. Right. If you stay in CBD in town. Sixth Avenue going downwards and you're not part of a home group, please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. There, there's one. There's please raise your hand. Right, next. Burnside, Hillside South at four ways. Burnside, Hillside South, four four winds, sorry. Four winds, four winds. Burnside, Hillside South at four winds, please. There, there's a person. Yeah, please come, please come to the front and, and give a right. Next. Macham Shope, Selborne Park. Please raise your hand quickly. Macham Shope, Selborne Park. There, there's one. Please come to the front. Macham Shope, Selborne Park. Baba Fields. Baba Fields. Dabazinduna Flats. Right here. Baba Fields. Dabazinduna Flats. Anyone? Raise your hands quickly. Right. Next. Ganuini. Right. Ganuini. Which side? Close to the flea market. Anyone in this area, please raise your hand. There. Are you together? Right. Get a, get a contact. Mahachula South and North. Mahachula South and North, please raise your hand. Mahachula South and North. There's a hand. Please come to the front. Be discipled. Let us know who you are. Mahachula South and North. Please come and join here. Thank you. Next, Shepi. Lopengula. Yeah? Where? Near Skulin. Lopengula near Skulin. Skulili, all right. Skulili. Lopengula. Near Skulili. Anyone? Quick, quick, quick. Show of hands. If you're in that area, there's someone there. Please come to the front and give us your name, please. Run, rush to the front. Next. Padernest Romney Park. Padernest Romney Park. There. Padernest Romney Park. Are you together with him? Yeah. yeah. Padernest Romney Park. Sunny side. Padinest, Romney Park, Sunnyside, please show your hand. Please raise your hand and come see Pastor Brian here. Right. Famona, Famona area. Famona. Anyone in Famona, there's someone. Okay. Famona, please come to the front. Next. Zilegazi G square, G G square, G square. Please raise your hand. G square. You can see Pastor Maponga next. Luveve Police Area. Luveve Police uh, New Stands, New Stands. Luveve New Stands, Luveve New Stands. Please raise your hand. Luveve New Stands. Right next. Oh, that's Get a nine. Jehovah's Witness. Get a nine. Jehovah's Witness. Raise your hand. If you live around there, get a nine. Jehovah's Witness. Please raise your hand if you live around there. Right. Next. Gulumane Segusile. Gulumane Segusile. If you are around that area, please show us by raising your hand. Come to the front. Next. Right, we, we want to kick off a new home group in Trinens. It's Trinens. Please show by raising your hand. Trinens, if you stay in Trinens, please show by raising your hand. Hey, where do people stay? I'm seeing majority of people, they stay in church. <laughs> Trinens areas. Right. Okay, that's your daughter. Right. Yeah. So Trinens 
Here you can approach Mamputi, right? That's mother and daughter, so that they are okay. All right, thank you. Where? CBD, right here in church. Church, right here in the church building. If you don't want to be, or if you're in town after work, you don't want to travel anywhere straight after work or straight after your business in town, we have our own group right here in church. Please see Shama. Anyone who wants to join in CBD, there. CBD, there's one person. Please join. Next. Montgomery behind Fairbridge Police. Anyone? Montgomery behind Fairbridge Police. Thank you. Popoma, Matonisa. Matonisa and Popoma. Anyone? There, there's one. Right, let's stand. Let's stand. <coughs> right, so we have a list of home groups there. If you check, look at the back on the wall there, we have a list of home groups. We all start six to seven every Wednesday. Belong to a home group so that you can be led, you can be shepherded. Amen. 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 Right. So be part of a home group so that you can be led. You need to be led. You need to grow. The church is broken down into smaller groups. We cannot know everyone. Right. So if you don't want to belong to a home group and you have a grievance, don't complain that there's no love in the church. You don't want to get involved. Amen. Or if we have mentioned, if there is an area that we haven't mentioned and you'd want to open up your home for a home group, come and see me and we'll assist you to do that. Amen. All ladies, please belong to K Networks in MLI. Ladies are different from us men. Men don't need to talk too much and gather and, and cry and discuss many things. But for ladies, for, 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 for women, they, yeah, amen. But for, for women, there's a need to come together. There's a need to fellowship. There's a need to be close. There's a, yeah. So belong to those care networks and you'll be known, you'll grow. Amen. It's all part of shepherding. That is what we were teaching. We don't do it for fun. It's the way of shepherding. Amen. That's the way of Christ. That's how we shepherd each other. That's how we grow. That is how the church stays close knit. Amen. And I think we should carry out this activity more often because as we move to where we are going, we will not know you. It's a big church. 10 times the size of where we are now and still here we don't know each other so if you don't want to belong to a cell group or a care network you will feel lost amen get involved aspire to become a shepherd amen amen aspire to emulate Christ aspire to have people also following you and following your example amen don't just be dead weight in the church don't just sit Week in, week out, you are just a, a bench warmer. Do something in the house of God. Amen. Hey, I see some ladies laughing. They, hey, do something. You looking back. Yes, do something. Be involved. That's the way of Christ. Amen. All right, let's just pray now as we disperse, as we part ways. Tuesday, we are continuing with this salvation. Okay. Thank you. Before we, before we close, perhaps you've been listening to us sharing. We're sharing about Christ. We're teaching about Christ. Maybe you are here today and you've never given your life to Christ. I want to give you an opportunity now to accept Jesus. Amen. We don't know the length of our days. We, none of us know when we are exiting this earth. But be sure of one thing, that if you've accepted Christ, you will be with him in eternity. So don't let this opportunity pass you by. If that's you here today and you say, I want this Jesus that they're speaking about, raise your hand. We will lead you to Christ. It's a very simple prayer. It's free of charge. It's simple. We will lead you to Christ and you can begin to walk with him. Raise your hand if you're here today. If that's you, don't be shy. It's your life. You are born alone. You die alone. Amen. So if you want that opportunity to accept Christ, please raise your hand. There's a hand there. 
Thank you. If you want an opportunity to give your life to Christ, raise your hand. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Lift it up high. Lift it up high. Come to the front. Come to the front. Let's clap. There's another one. Come. Please come. Please come to the front. Raise your hand wherever you are. If that's you, raise your hand. Let's keep clapping. Amen. Please come to the front. Amen. Please come to the front. Ask your neighbor. Check with your neighbor. Say, if you are to die today, my friend, where are you going? Are you sure? Have you accepted Christ? Look at the next one. Ask your neighbor. Are you sure? Where are you going? Do you know Christ? Is Christ in you? Check the neighbor behind you. Ask them, are you sure, my friend? If not, bring them. If they are not sure, bring them up front. Wow. Amazing. Wow, wow, wow. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Right, this is what we are about. We are about winning souls to Christ. Amen. So let's just lead these one, two, three precious souls to Christ. Amen. This is a turning point in your life. What you are doing is probably one of the most important decisions you make in your life. From this point onwards, you become a child of God. Amen. I'd like to encourage you also, after giving your life to Christ, do not become dead weight, but choose to press in. Be a valuable member of the church. Be a shepherd. Aspire to be a shepherd. Have people that you will lead also. If this is good news that you've received today, there must be people behind you and say, right, these are the people that I've led. These are the people I'm showing the path as well. Amen. Don't come in and just sit and start in row two. The next week you're in row five. The next week you're in the back seat. The week after that you're out. But aspire to chase after God. Amen. Are we together? So let's just pray for these souls, precious souls. I want you to repeat after what I'm saying. Say it with your mouth. Believe it in your heart. And you shall be saved. Amen. Let's pray. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I come before you realizing that I'm a sinner. I thank you that you are God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. Thank you, Lord, for your blood that washes me. Thank you, Lord, for your blood that cleanses me. Thank you, Lord, that from today I am your child. I place my hand in your hand and I choose from this very day to walk with you in Jesus name thank you Lord that the old me dies today the new day the new me lives today and is alive in Christ thank you Lord that my destiny is now aligned to you in the mighty name of Jesus I thank you in Jesus name I pray amen and amen let's just celebrate and thank God the Bible says there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repents there's joy there are angels that are rejoicing and we too here are rejoicing with you amen first Corinthians second Corinthians 5 17 says if anyone in Christ is a new creation all things have passed away and all things have become new so the old you is dead is dead amen but aspire to walk with God amen first Peter 2 verse 2 it says as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the Word of God that you may grow thereby I hope you have a Bible do you have a Bible do you have Bibles right do you have a Bible right so if you have a Bible start to read from the book of Romans every day before you sleep read from the book of Romans don't scroll on Facebook and Instagram and be laughing at videos take time to read the Word of God amen you begin to grow as you spend time in the Word of God and also first Thessalonians 5 17 says pray without ceasing we have a culture in this church where we pray we check in and we check out how many how many people check in and check out every day <laughs> 
Yeah, the numbers are, are poor. But we check in and we check out every day. There's a church prayer group where we check in and check out every day. That means from midnight to 6 a.m., we are praying at least for one hour. Every person prays at least for one hour. That's how you grow and you cement your relationship with God. Amen. So make sure that daily you are spending time in the Word. Make sure that you are spending time in prayer and you begin to grow. Lastly, Hebrews 10, 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some. Right? So we are here every Sunday. Make sure that you are in church every Sunday. Tuesday we are here for prayer. Saturdays we go out for evangelism. Although for now evangelism is on hold until elections are done. We'll continue with that after elections. But we are here. Anytime there's a gathering, do not be found elsewhere. Prioritize those days. Sunday is your day. Tuesday is your day. Saturday is your day. And you begin to grow. Amen. Then lastly, there are some ladies behind you and a gentleman there. They will just take you for a few minutes, take down your details, and then afterwards bring you back into the service as we close up. You can follow the man in the black suit or the lady in the black dress there. Thank you. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, we thank God for those that have given their lives to Christ. Again, I encourage you to belong to the small groups in the church. Amen. I'm not good at playing for time now. <laughs> but these people will join us soon and then we can close. That is our scripture there. We'll read it together as soon as they join us. Amen. Brian is saying I should sing. No, I can't sing. <laughs> Amen. Yes, maybe those that want to join a ministry, we have different ministries in the church, music team. There is Pastor Gogo, I don't know where she is, or Pastor Clayton. You can raise your hand, he's right there. That's our music team. Those are our music team pastors and leaders. As you all know, we're recording our third album. Our choir is a top-notch choir. We've won an award. And this third album is promising to be amazing. So if you want to train yourself, gain skills, you don't need to sing like an angel. We can train you. Or if you want to learn the instruments, please see Pastor Clayton. Those are our music departmental heads. Which other ministry we also have ushering we also have ushering is the head usher here Kulex. Charmaine Charmaine is right here please come forward Charmaine there's the lady in red you can see Charmaine if you want to join the ministry powerful ministry lots of pastors come through this ministry they're the people that shake your hands at the door they make sure that this place is clean they usher our bishops our pastors when they come through please join the ministry they are beautiful people and they will help shape you and mold you. Amen. Right next. Intercessors. Pastor Belinda is right there. If you are a prayer warrior, if you love praying or if you want to learn how to pray, that's Pastor Belinda. Join the intercessors ministry. She will help you to spearhead and she spearheads actually the church in prayer. So join that ministry. Next, counseling. Counseling. Counseling, counseling, counseling. There's Mam Putti right there. This lady in black. If you want to be those that counsel people after they've been led to Christ, just as we saw these lovely people going out, please see her. They will teach you and they will train you. Thank you. All right. I think our people are back. Other departments, we have total men. Be part of the total men. We have couples ministry. If you're married, join the couples ministry. We meet, we have good discussions, we help to build marriages. Amen. We have also MLI. Be part of the MLI K Networks. Anything else? Sunday school, children's church ministry. If you love teaching children, if children are your passion. There's Sister Natasha there, the light lady in glasses. You can see her after the service. Amen. Right. Let us pray and then we read our scripture. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word today that has been shared i pray mighty god as we endeavor to be like the great shepherd i pray mighty god that none of these your precious sheep will be lost but father oh god help us 
to be able to lead your people in the way that Christ led his disciples in the way that Christ is leading the church may we emulate Christ's leadership in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus thank you father oh God for many other shepherds that you are raising in this time many other shepherds oh God that will rise up and show people the way and emulate Christ in every way of their lives in the mighty name of Jesus establish us as a church continue oh God to brood over us in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen. Let's read our scripture together in unison. Deuteronomy 1.11 says, May God bless you. Talk to someone you don't know. We'll see you on Tuesday. Amen. Talk to someone you don't know. Say hi. Spread the love, spread the love, spread the love, spread the love, spread the love someone you don't know share the love of Christ with them amen see you Tuesday